In this video, I'll explain how to approximate the area under a curve using rectangles. A typical problem might look like this. It says to approximate the area under the curve f of x equals x squared plus 6 on the interval from 0 to 8 using four subdivisions and left-hand endpoints. So the first thing we need to figure out is the quantity that we call delta x. So delta x is always going to be b minus a divided by n. So what are those uh, numbers represented by? Well, they give us the interval from 0 to 8, and the starting point of the interval is always going to be a, the ending point of the interval is always going to be the b. So in this case, b minus a is just going to be 8 minus 0. And then n is the number of subdivisions. So this number 4, that's the n that I'm looking for. So we've got 8 minus 0 divided by 4, that's going to be 2. So what that 2 represents is the width of each of these rectangles we're using or the width of each of the subintervals that we're dividing the interval from 0 to 8 into. So the next step is going to be to draw a little number line. On our number line, we're going to start at 0 and end at 8. This is the interval over which we're trying to approximate our area. Now we're going to be dividing this area into four pieces, which means we need to draw three additional tick marks in between the 0 and the 8. That's going to give us four total rectangles. One, two, three, four. And each of those rectangles is going to be 2 units wide. That's what the delta x equaling 2 tells us. So where are those tick marks? Well, if we go from 0 and increase by 2, we're going to end up at 2. If we increase by another 2, we'll end up at 4. Increase by 2 again, we end up at 6. And increase by 2 again, just to double check, we really do end up at 8. So it's a good idea to double check that you really do end up where you expect to. OK, now what? Now what we're going to do is make a chart to organize our work. We're going to have four rectangles. So the first thing we're going to do is make our first column be the rectangle number that we're thinking about. So we'll have four rows in our table. One, two, three, four. Each of our rectangles is going to have a base. Each of our rectangles is going to have a height. And then base times height is going to give us area. So the base of each rectangle is going to be delta x. When we use this method, the bases are always going to be the same, that delta x that we calculated uh, at the very first step. The height is going to given, be given by the function value. So the y values of this function are going to be the heights of these rectangles. And this is where the information that they tell us for left-hand endpoints comes into play. So the left-hand endpoint of each subinterval, so the interval from 0 to 2, the left-hand endpoint is the 0, which means plugging 0 into my function gives me the height of my first rectangle. So f of 0, my function is x squared plus 6, so that's 0 squared plus 6, which is 6. So the base of my first rectangle is 2, the height of my first rectangle is 6, so the area of my first rectangle is 2 times 6, base times height, which is 12. For my second rectangle, my second interval goes from 2 to 4. I'm again using the left-hand endpoint, so I'm going to be using the 2. So the height of my second rectangle is going to be f of 2, which is 2 squared plus 6. That's 4 plus 6, which is 10. Area is base times height. 2 times 10 is 20. For my third rectangle, I'm going from 4 to 6. Left-hand endpoint is 4, so my height is f of 4 which is 4 squared plus 6, that's 16 plus 6, that's 22. Area is base times height, 2 times 22 is 44. Finally, for my third rectangle, it goes from 6 to 8. Left-hand endpoint is going to be the number on the left, which is 6. So f of 6 is the height. 6 squared plus 6, that's going to be 42. Area is base times height, 2 times 42 is 84. And then the last thing that we have to do is find the total area so we're going to add up all these numbers, and the total is going to be 160. So the answer to this question is 160. Now I'm going to do the same problem again, but this time I'm going to change the way that we choose the point to determine the height. Instead of using left-hand endpoints, I'm going to use right-hand endpoints. A lot of the work is going to be exactly the same. The delta x is still going to be b minus a divided by n. 8 minus 0 divided by 4, which is 2. 
when I draw my number line, it's going to work out the same way. I'm starting at 0, I'm ending at 8, I'm going up by 2 each time, so my dividing lines are at 0, 2, 4, 6, and 8. So now when I draw my chart, again, my first column just tells me which rectangle I'm talking about. 1, 2, 3, and 4. My second column gives me the base. The bases of the rectangles are still 2 because delta x is still 2. It's the heights that are going to be different. And then the area is still going to be base times height. So this time, instead of using the left-hand endpoint of each subinterval, so for the first subinterval from 0 to 2, this time I'm going to be using the right-hand endpoint. So instead of using 0, now I'm going to be using 2 for the height of my first rectangle, because that's the number that's on the right of that little subinterval. So my height of my first rectangle is going to be f of 2, which turns out to be 10. Area is base times height, so the area of my first rectangle is 20. For the second subinterval, from 2 to 4, the right-hand number is 4, so my height is f of 4, 4 squared plus 6 is 22. Area is base times height, so I get 44. And so on. Height of my third rectangle is f of 6, 6 squared plus 6 is 42, so the area is, again, base times height, which is 84. And then finally, my fourth rectangle, the right-hand endpoint is going to be 8, so my height is f of 8, 8 squared plus 6 is 70, 2 times 70 is 140, and now again, the last step is to add all those up, and the total I get is 288. So that's the answer to this one. One more time, but this time, instead of using left-hand endpoints or right-hand endpoints, I'm going to use midpoints. So that means that instead of using the number that's all the way on the left of the little subinterval, or the number that's all the way on the right, I'm going to use the number that's exactly halfway in the middle. So just like before, a lot of this doesn't change. Delta x is still b minus a over n, so it's still 8 minus 0 over 4. It's still 2. When I draw my number line, it still has dividing lines at 2, 4, and 6. But now, in between each of these pairs of numbers, I'm going to pick the point that's in the middle. Sometimes that's easy to just look at and see what it is, but if you're ever worried about what number is exactly in the middle, all you're going to do is average the two numbers. So between 0 and 2, the average of 0 and 2 is 0 plus 2 over 2, which is 1. The average of 2 and 4 is 3, the average of 4 and 6 is 5, and the average of 6 and 8 is 7. So this time, I'm going to use 1, 3, 5, and 7 for my heights, because those are the midpoints. But again, everything else is the same. So in my chart, rectangle number 1, 2, 3, 4, base, all my bases are still 2, again, because delta x is 2. It's the heights that are going to be different area will still equal base times height. So the height of my first rectangle is going to be f of 1, which is 1 squared plus 6, which is 7. And then the area is 2 times 7, which is 14. Second rectangle, the height will be f of 3. 3 squared plus 6, that's 15. 2 times 15 is 30. Third rectangle will be f of 5. The height will be f of 5, I should say. That gives me 31. 2 times 31 is 62. And then finally, the fourth rectangle's height will be f of 7. And 7 squared plus 6 is 55. 2 times 55, the area is 110. And then just like before, we add up all those areas, and the answer we get is 216. So that's our approximation using midpoints. So the things that you have to pay attention to are the interval that they give you. That tells you the a and the b the number of subdivisions, that tells you the n, and then how you choose the points to tell the heights. Sometimes it'll be left-hand endpoints, sometimes it'll be right-hand endpoints, and every once in a while it'll be midpoints. So based on those instructions, you compute delta x, draw yourself a number line, and then create a table to organize your work.